Welcome back everyone. Tonight I'm going to do a review for the new uh, Generation 1 reissue of Hot Rod. For anyone not in the know, Walmart has an exclusive deal with Hasbro right now to carry these reissues of classic Generation 1 Transformers figures done up in more or less their original packaging, so probably the most authentic looking reissues we've ever gotten, at least here uh, stateside. And I have to say, the first time I walked into a Walmart and saw their stock of hot rods on the shelf, it was this really bizarrely nostalgic feeling for me. Now, I'm not old enough to remember the initial run of the Transformers. I, I didn't really discover it until it was already into the Generation 2 toy line and cartoon show and all that. So I never got to experience these firsthand, but just uh, over years of being probably unhealthily into the Transformers brand... I've done a lot of time online and looking at all these old stock photos or pictures of people's collections of these really old, just very, very 80s looking bits of memorabilia, you know, with, you know, the packages still intact and all that. This really cool red grid motif they have and these very alien sci-fi looking drawings of these robot characters and just... I've never, I'd never seen it in person, aside from, I guess, walking around at conventions. So, you know, walking into a store and seeing that on the shelf just it, it blew my mind. I thought that was so cool. It was like I hopped in a time machine and, like, finally got to see an original Transformers toy on the shelf. I imagine there are some longtime collectors out there that aren't too thrilled about just how well these replicate the original releases. You know, if you have, like, an original Hot Rod that you've kept in pristine condition, you're probably worried about that losing some level of aftermarket value. But for those that don't fall into that category, I think this is this is a pretty universally seen as a good thing. All right, so I'll uh, put the aside aside, and we'll do our usual thing here. I'll take a look at the box real quick, check all sides of that, and we'll look at the figure itself and all its different modes, the accessories, and we'll just talk about it, and then at the end I'll give my... Final thoughts on the toy. All right, here we have the box itself. You can see a nice drawing of Hot Rod on the front, recreated from the original packaging. Has his title here, Autobot Cavalier, the name Hot Rod. You've got the uh, classic Hasbro logo on here, which I thought was really cool. The old passage converts from race car to robot and back. Ooh, that was impressive in the 80s, all right? Transformers logo. On the top here just shows the transformation of the toy. Side, picture of Hot Rod in his both, uh, both of his modes, same thing on the side. Now this is cool. This is the big year three, is it three? I think so, year three diorama. The Transformers brand. Each year of the, the original Transformers toy line had these really cool just battle scenes done out in this old school art. I've always been a big fan of those. I wish there were like posters I could get. There might be some out there. I would just put those like side by side up on my wall there. But anyway, it's very cool. You got Metroplex, you got the Scramble City Combiner dudes, Predacons, Triple Changers, Ultra Magnus, a lot of the 1986 cast here, Hot Rod, Blur. You got a little Triptychon up here. And it's just really neat to see. Of course, on the bottom, you have a recreation of Hotspot's original tech spec card. And back in the day, these were, you know, pretty lengthy. If you look at bios nowadays, it's usually about a sentence or two, but these were full-on descriptions, you know. Had their function, his, you know, cavalier. Had a quote from them. And then you had a nice long description of the character along with some specs about them. And then on the side, you have their stats. Their actual specifications on a, you know, one, or I guess zero to ten scale. And if you're wondering what the point of the red grid lines were, the original toys had these, like, decoder glasses. It's like uh, red lenses. You'd put those on, and it would get rid of this, all this red obstructing the blue lines here to make it more clear. Obviously, you can see very clearly without it, so it was kind of a wasted gimmick. But, you know, 80s kids thought it was cool. And then on the bottom, you just have and Hot Rod and his two modes. Nothing special there. Instructions, nothing special. Just one little sheet folded in half here. Shows the car mode, shows his transformation, and then the sticker layout. 
So this guy came with some foil stickers, like most of the old toys. I've already applied mine. All right, here we have Hot Rod Sports Car Mode. And this is a very nice looking car. There's lots of chrome all over it. Got these big exhaust pipes on either side. Got this engine block on the top, sewn up nicely. Big foil sticker right on the hood. It's got our Autobot rib sign right there. That reveals his allegiance. Whole lot of shiny goodness on this. This car does roll very well. There's no issues with clearance or anything driving it around. The tires are actually rubber, unlike some other releases of this toy that had changed to plastic. Uh, it doesn't have the die cast metal feet of the original toy, but oh well. You might notice that there's a big hole right on top of his engine block. The point of that hole is to accommodate one of his two weapons. Now, either one will work, but the instructions call out this guy right here. So you can just carefully plug that in. And he's got kind of a, you know, battle mode for his car form. All right, now something I had stopped doing some time back in my reviews, just to uh, cut down on time and everything, uh, I'm actually bringing back. I'm going to actually show the transformations for these toys, since I'm now only reviewing toys one item at a time instead of whole, entire waves. So hopefully that'll give people a more complete picture of these things. And with that said, let's get started on Hot Rod. So... We'll remove this. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull his legs out like so. Make sure they click into place. Flip out his feet here, like that. So his arms out. Okay, All right. So kind of pull out and up on his hood section. Flip it around. Make sure you flip Hot Rod's head up, and you. Flip his little crotch piece there. And you plug the hood straight down into said crotch piece. All right, so you got most of them done up now. Rotate the arms around, more natural position. And you swing the back section up like this to give him his little spoiler wings he's known for. All right, and there's his robot mode. You can see it just really has this retro sci-fi robot feel to it with all these shiny mechanical details. Now, something about this whole design kind of was reminding me of like old carnivals, the rides there you would see. Just very lit up, very mechanical looking. So Hot Rod doesn't really have much in the way of posability. It's really just uh, elbows and I guess you could say a bicep swivel there. It's not very useful. Head doesn't move or anything. I think he's one of the better looking robots to come out of the Generation 1 line. Just as far as proportions and all that, he doesn't seem quite as bizarre or goofy looking as some of the other toys. Here we can give him his two weapons. Now, something you might notice he's got what seem to be really large holes for his hands. And that's because this is based on a modified version of the mold. And this version was originally done in, uh, I think, the Japanese Transformers collection. That's what they called it. And that toy at the time, that release, came with not only Hot Rod's regular guns, but his Target Master partner as well. So what they did was they kept the 5mm hand holes from the Target Master Hot Rod... And then just increase the diameter of his regular guns posts, which are normally, I think, like three millimeters. That way you can hold all of them. Now, unfortunately, and I'm really disappointed about this, this version does not come with a Target Master partner. I guess they wanted to keep it as authentic to the very original toys they could with the molds that they had on hand. So it's not the original mold. It is a modified version that was meant to hold the Target Master, but I don't know if it was because they were cheap or if they just wanted to keep it original, but doesn't have anything extra, which is a shame. But that little omission aside, I really do like this toy. Now I'm looking at this from three decades after it was designed, so obviously it doesn't hold a candle to newer figures as far as posability, proportions, all that. But it does look really good for a toy that was made 30 years ago. I think it 
Looks very competent. Yeah, doesn't have much articulation at all. Luckily, the feet aren't actually connected by a piece like many other G1 Transformers are, so at least gives the illusion that he could separate his feet if he wanted to. One other thing that's worth pointing out, his thigh stickers are one of two variants. These are the ones that like Hot Rod originally had. When he did the when they did the Target Master version, they made much smaller thigh stickers for him because these seem to have a tendency to get scraped around during transformation when you're kind of telescoping the legs in and out. So again, I guess they want to just keep it with the original toy accuracy there. A little bit of style over function, I guess. But as long as you're careful, you shouldn't have an issue with this. Just be mindful of those stickers when you're, you know, pressing his legs back in or pulling him out, just trying not to scrape along him. So as I already said, I really do like this figure. I think he's, you know, a worthy buy. A little pricey for his size, but you are kind of getting the nostalgia factor, the collector the collectible factor in there. So I would recommend picking one up if you see it. I think you won't be disappointed. It'll be a good taste of, you know, the best of the Generation 1 toys. I hope you enjoyed this look at the most recent reissue of the original Generation 1 Hot Rod. Let me know down below what you think of it. Is it something you're interested in picking up? If you already have it, do you like it? Do you have any problems with it? If you did enjoy this review, go ahead, toss it a like. If you want to see more like it or any of my discussion videos about the Transformers as a whole, feel free to subscribe to the channel so you can always see more. And with all that said, I'll see you all next time.